<laughs> Holy cow! Hey there, fellas. So the calendar says it's springtime, the weather conditions appear to fit, but not all of the snow has melted away yet. We've got quite a bit still lying around, meaning we still have plenty of time to conduct an experiment aimed at increasing a car's off-road capabilities. In the deep snow, or in the mud if it were summer, but given the time of the year, we're gonna try it in the snow. So there's a video out there that the viewers have long been obsessed with. And now it's got my attention too. It shows us how some dude increased his car's off-road prowess in a rather peculiar fashion. So on one side you've got a plank attached to the wheels. And my understanding is that he's running the very same setup on the other side as well. Now, theoretically, this should be pretty effective. That plank has got a substantial surface area, and so it forces itself into the dirt, the snow, or the mud, doesn't really matter. The point is that it has enough surface area that would keep it from sinking, and the car should be able to propel itself forward making small steps, making it effectively a stepper car. Anyway, so right here we've got ourselves this wonderful automobile, where you can engage the all-wheel drive, though it doesn't have any lockers, but okay. Now, finding some snow nearby our facility where we can get this thing stuck shouldn't be a problem at all. All right, let's put together that system and try it in off-road conditions. Let's do this. Fellows, our online shop has got a new offering for you. Check out this lovely document holder I got here. Now, this thing is multi-multi-functional. You can use it as a place to keep your business cards, your documents, I mean, you name it. As for this item's quality, well, let me show you. Now, this is my personal holder where I keep my very own documents. I've been carrying this around since 2019, which makes it two years that I've been using it. If you look over here, you'll see a small inscription that says Garage 54, see it? Now, this you can have custom done. It can bear your license plate number, your own name or your spouse's name if you like, anything your heart desires, and whatever brings a smile to your face. So yeah, now we offer these really sweet document holders. All of the links you'll find in the description. Go ahead and get yourself one of these. Can a few planks make an UAS a better off-roader? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, so look here. Making a stepper mechanism turned out to be simpler than we thought. We welded everything together out of boxed section tubing, which we have a bunch of at our disposal, as do most other garages. Here we have the axis, which is stepping out a bit, since we don't want the plank to be hitting the rocker panels or the body when it's on the upswing. And another thing I'd like to point out. Initially, we were thinking we should keep everything tight, as in make a short lever for it to make relatively small steps to reduce the load on the differentials and the transmission. But then we got to thinking, this is an UAS after all, which was originally conceived as a military spec vehicle that was designed to take a beating. And so we decided to bring everything a bit further away from the center. As you can plainly see, it's about level with the edge of this here tire. Now that should get the car to make giant leaps. As for this right here, honestly, I just wanted to get whatever sort of pipe I could find to position it over the axis and weld on a metal plate which we could attach a plank to. But the boys insisted we fit a bearing to it, and I was like, okay, whatever. And so this is the setup we're going to be running. It does seem a tad overcomplicated, but we wouldn't have it any other way. I say we carry on to the testing phase to see whether or not this concoction holds up. I mean, it could start falling apart straight away, rendering the entire concept absolutely useless. I mean, it very well might not be worth doing, period. Right, let's finalize the assembly and proceed to do some test sizing, some testing.
So here's what's up, guys. After the last snowstorm, we thought that we'd be able to make it through on the Uaz. But you see, we've got sort of a swamp under there, where we actually did some driving on a tracked vehicle. It was all good, and we were looking to test the stepper Uaz right here in the snow. We've been seeing so much snow this year that it's not even funny. Anyway, so here's what's happening. So I drove that American rig over here to drag this out, but at some point it slipped towards the creek, and now that thing is stuck and we're trying to get it free. It's a good thing we still have that Toyota Prado at hand. Things just keep getting better and better. And we've been at this for a good two hours now. And all of this time we haven't been able to position the Uaz to send it stepping straight into the deep snow. Okay, we've dragged it out to here, fitted them wheels with the stepping plank mechanism. Right, enough with the talk. Let's fire up the car and commence testing. Let's get to it. Okay then. Carefully engaging first gear. Okay, Slapmobile. Let's rock. Holy cow! Isn't that something? With how it's jumping around. What's wild is that you can't even hang on to the wheel with it spinning back and forth. <laughs> what a fun dance it's doing! Are you gonna continue moving? Or you're done after a meter? What are you laughing at? You're being thrown all around the cabin! Well, of course I am! Okay, now that was pretty good. It seems to be stepping with just one side. Come on, let's keep going forward. Okay, the second side is now in the game. Though the right side is more effective, perhaps it's because I'm sitting here on the left. Good boy! The left side is now also taking part. And again, the right side is more active. What about the left? Left! That's it! The plank has broken off. <laughs> that was pretty fun, but in any case, I didn't really get far. Despite us giving this thing some huge feet, it doesn't seem to be making confident progress. It is seriously hesitating. Even after going so far as 100 meters, you're stepping out of the car looking like this. <laughs> with a broken nose and a kink in your neck. And so here's what's up. How far did we even go? A car's length? I nearly got everything shaken out of me. My guts, my brains... Though I'm not sure if those were even there in the first place. The point is that it shakes you up hard. Now here's what I suggest we do. So there's this thing called snowshoes, which in and of themselves are pretty big. But then they have these tails, right? which dig in so that you can walk over snow without tripping. So in our situation, the idea would be to cut these planks in half, reposition them further back, and bolt them back up, in order for each wheel to step individually as if it were wearing a snowshoe. 
See what comes out of that. Perhaps those will help this car's off-road ability? Let's try it and find out. And here's what we're looking at, fellas. Here's our snowmobile with four separate planks. The wheels are going to rotate individually. Now, how this works in practice, well, we're about to see. I can definitely see it doing... So when the planks were still in one piece, the steering wheel would spin violently in one direction or the other. It was nearly impossible to hang on to. And so here I think it'll be doing something very similar. Say the front right wheel tries to push itself through the snow with the lever, chances are it's gonna force the steering wheel to the left. Now exactly how hard it's going to be to handle the steering wheel is beyond me. All right then, let's roll. Experiments in the field immediately highlight all of the pros and the cons. All right, so hanging onto the steering wheel is gonna be quite unnerving. Maybe I shouldn't even hang on to it. No. No. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be going anywhere. But why? Not all of the wheels are in it. It is slowly moving forward, though. No? What? I think I'll be better off holding the wheel after all. The way it's lifting itself... Come on now! It even made a small step. Like literally 10 centimeters. And it rolled back after making a step. Now that was a tremendous step right there. No, it didn't really get anywhere. How about if... I'm being told to steer right. Nah, it is all over the place. It's not going anywhere. There you have it. This did not work. Here's where we're at with this, fellas. It dug up the place quite well indeed. But even after we sawed those planks in half and wound up with a setup with individual planks at each corner, the car was barely able to move so much as half a meter forward. It proceeded to buck, jump, stumble, hobble. So this is where its progress comes to an end. So yeah, this doesn't seem to be an effective solution. 
This isn't a great supplement, be it with two or four planks attached. As they are situated in our case, this just isn't working, at least in the snow. Then again, I mean, snow, mud, it's the same deal, really. At least I think it'll behave the same way in the mud. So any sort of attempt to make this thing a better off-roader, as you can plainly see, absolutely doesn't get anywhere. The only thing we've really accomplished is making this car extremely uncomfortable, as if it were upset and yelling at me to get out of the car. In any case, this was 107% a blast, this experiment. The concept doesn't work. Whoever doesn't believe me is free to try for themselves. Send us the video if you decide to go for it, by the way. Curious to see how this goes for you. And that's all I have for you, fellows. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments, send in some suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right. Catch you later. Where's that tractor?